There's some truth in the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. All right, so obviously the dose makes the poison, but when it comes to training your body or doing things to your body, a little bit of stress can actually make you far healthier and stronger. For example, exercise, a stress on the body, your body adapts, gets stronger. Heat, okay, sauna has shown to be improve health, but while you're in the sauna, it's stressing your body out. Cold plunge, cold plunge is pretty remarkable, shown to boost immune function and the production of feel-good chemicals. So all these things uh, and many other things that can cause stress can actually make you more fit, healthy, and strong. The key is understanding what the right dose is for your body, what you can handle and adapt to. I'm uh, immediately reminded of that meme from The Hangover. Remember that Asian guy from The Hangover where yes. he's like, oh, but did you die? You are having a bad day? Did you die? I got shot. But did you die? <laughs> yeah, 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 Mr. What was his name? Yeah, Mr. Something. I just uh, watched that with my kids, by the way. Great movie. With my thirteen, my thirteen-year-old daughter, uh -huh. and the scene when he jumps out of the freaking <laughs> naked, trunk and he just naked. lets it all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh it's yeah, very Classic. revealing. Classic. Not not a good dad. Have you guys moment. watched the? Uh, I brought this up a while about a while ago. I don't know if you guys have seen it since I said it to you guys. Is the, uh, you know, like. How long has Wim Hof been doing his thing? Like over a decade. Yeah. Right. He's been yeah. he's been preaching this message. It's I feel like just recently in the last year, maybe two years, has really taken off as far as becoming like popular. Like mm -hmm. now I, I can't go through my feed without seeing at least two or three cold plunge videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because of that, like anything else, you see the counter movement now of everybody mm -hmm. that's trying to, to shit on it and like, oh, that's ridiculous, you know, to do something like that. Like there's so many other better things you can do. You know, what was funny. I, we were like speculating. I think I was skeptical as to whether or not it was going to like catch fire, take off because it's hard. You know, it's not yes. something a lot of people yeah. enjoy doing at all. Uh, but then again, it's like, I should have known, like, cause you got your Spartan races, you got your OCR events, you got these, like, I, I feel like we're, we're seeking out discomfort a lot more now because well, we're so, well, you, our body requires it. And, um, if, if you live too comfortably, you actually become sick and mm -hmm. chronically ill. So you have to choose yeah. to exercise. You have to choose to stress your body out appropriately. That's always the key here. But the cold, I mean, cold plunges, I mean, they do boost immune system. They do, in, in many cases, regulate hormones. They do produce these feel-good catecholamines. In fact, there people have been known to become addicted to cold plunge, the feeling of the energy well, that you get after. So, yeah. so that's my theory on why it's taken off is because it speaks for itself. If you've never, like, it's funny. It's always the, the people that are clowning on it are the people never the people that have ever done it consistently. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like somebody who maybe put their foot in one time or like, this is stupid. Yeah, they or, did one more time. Or they yeah. never did it, yeah. right? Because if you if you've ever done it uh, at all with some some sort of regularity around it, it you feel the difference. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you instantly feel yeah. it when you get out, and then if you do it consistently long enough, you start to see some of the compounding but, benefits from it. Yeah. And by the way, this is old wisdom. So a lot of, because yep. you now have products like Plunge, for example, this this you can put it in your home, and it's you know. Uh, it, it's filtered water and it maintains a particular temperature. So now we have these like products that you can put in your home for cold. It's like turnkey. Yeah. 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 For cold, for cold dip. People think this is like this new thing. People have noticed the, and, and acknowledged the benefits of cold water and cold temperature um, therapy for a long time. It's a part of certain cultures in yeah. Russia, for example, um, they're known for when they wash it, when they bathe a kid to finish off the bathing with super cold water. There's videos mm -hmm. of little kids in the snow. This is the recess and recess. They put their bathing yeah. suits on. The teacher like kicks them outside yeah. to go in the snow and, and, you know, take their coats, everything off. Yep. And then, then they, they play in the, in the snow. snow. They throw snow at each other. And I was just watching. There's a special on right now. I think it's on Amazon. I don't know. David Letterman is interviewing, uh, you two the band mm. and it's like a really cool and they take them back to their homeland and like he, they tell their whole story and there's an area that I forget what it's called but a special bathing area where like wow. like for hundreds of years everybody else it's like ice cold water and everybody it's like a traditional place that everybody goes and, and and swims in because of the benefits of the of the cold water and they do it throughout winter and everything when it's like super it, ice wasn't cold. there a group of there was like a club polar bear club yeah polar bear club mm -hmm. that's How over long has that been around that's been over in, they're all over they're all over the place it's not just they're in what do they do? They just san go francisco Truckee. Mm -hmm. yeah it's just a, a ton of people that are a part of a club that go do these cold swims yeah mm -hmm. the, the, it's what's interesting about it is if you've never done it before first of all it sucks to do it it's it's really shocking to the system 
But when you come out, oh my God, like- It's euphoric almost. That's exactly what I was so use. euphoric. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a sick ass pre-workout. You think if you think you're actually the best way to use it would be a pre workout. If you think yes. your your pre workout is amazing, no way. Go try and do that. Yep. I mean the the feeling of ready to lift and go at it is like unbelievable. I, I, that's the best way to use it. Mm -hmm. Post workout, the value would be if you're going to work out again, and you see athletes have done this in the past. Well, they'll jump in like a like a plastic garbage bin full of ice water because they're doing two or three workouts a day. And so they need to reduce inflammation mm -hmm. to allow for that crazy amount of training for the average person. You don't want to do that. You, you, you don't want to necessarily do that, but pre-workout, by the way, that's what the, the know, haters are trying to, to, to hate, to hate on that. Yeah, Cause it blunts the infl inflammatory muscle building signal or whatever. So, right. So which dumb. again, you know, what this reminds me of is how fasting was sold wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. fasting, we, we know fasting has been around forever, all kinds of great benefits to it. So that, of course, we latch on to the, the, the diet fat loss strategy of it, which is a terrible strategy right. to use it for. The same thing goes for the cold plunge. Yes, it can help facilitate recovery, but that's not even the biggest uh, benefits from it. And that's not how I would use it. No, so. but pre-workout, what it'll do is it'll preset the inflammatory response. It'll create natural endorphins, which will help with pain tolerance. Um, it produces catecholamines. So these are like dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. These are the chemicals that you're trying to artificially ramp up with a traditional pre-workout. But your body literally produces them naturally by being exposed to the cold. And because you did something hard to get it. So Huberman talks about this. Mm -hmm. When you do something hard to get that dopamine, you don't create that 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 feedback loop where it becomes, you start to downregulate receptors and starts to become a problem. This is actually a great way to get that dopamine release because you had to do something hard to get it. So that's how the brain is kind of wired. So as a pre-workout, that would be the absolute best way uh, to use it. And, yeah. and, I, and you've already done that. Oh yeah, consistently. That's how I like to use it. I'll mm -hmm. never, in fact, I think one time I've used it since I've been talking about using it consistently uh, after a workout. And that was just because I didn't get to it before. And I was like in a rush to work out and then I still wanted to plunge. Mm -hmm. Um, but I normally do the plunge first. Mm -hmm. You know, another benefit that I think is uh, not highlighted enough is how many of us are chest breathers and are at this constant state of like low levels of stress yeah, all the time yeah, because mm -hmm. of the way we breathe. Mm -hmm. Shallow breathing. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that in that. You can't do that. No, you won't you'll last be, long you'll be out in 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah, yeah. So it, it trains you to learn how to take those deep, it's slow- expensive controlled breathing and you, I can't stress enough. Of it's like the, resistance training for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's tremendous value in the, be able to calm yourself down like that in, in other times in your life. And, and I don't think anything does that better. To, okay. That. To add to yeah. that. So what you're essentially doing is you're creating this, you're inducing this artificial stress response. And because you're in this stressed environment of cold, and you are now trying to counter it by deep breathing, you are teaching yourself how to regulate in a stressful situation right. in a controlled way. The carryover to everyday life is profound because if you practice that on a regular basis and then you're in traffic or your partner triggers you or something happens with your kids or whatever, you can now regulate that response and maintain a much more calm, focused uh, state of mind. And if you do this consistently enough, just like anything else, it becomes second nature. It's not like you have to go, oh, how do I do that? Right, 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 right. You know, right. you've been taught to right. breathe like that so much that you feel your body will feel yourself to get into that moment and, automatically and you'll automatically switch over. It's so, wow. yeah, I mean, I think it's got a lot of benefits that we, we don't highlight enough. Everybody's always muscle building fat loss. We always, and then they don't care about anything. Else. Yeah. And, and I know there's a lot of people that, pr, pr, you know, pitch like, Oh, and look, by the way, this is true too, but it's, again, it's not the reason why I do it. You start staying in there. Like I have been lately where I'm hitting five minutes and stuff like that. I'm fucking cold for like five hours. By the way, you yeah. know that that at that point, speaking of fat loss, it does teach your body to convert white fat to brown, brown fat. fat, Yeah, which is a thermogenic active form of body fat, which uh, burns calories. This is the kind of body fat you want. This yeah. is like the performance enhancing body fat, if you will, loosely defined. Well, you can, I didn't do it today, but you could also tell like, so if I, if I was, if I'd done it before we podcast today and this room is super hot and warm right now, you, I would still be like shaking. Right. And so, and, and, and that burns calories that your, your body's sitting there trying to heat up That's and right. warm up. And that continues. Like when I, when I start staying in the long periods where I'm in there for four or five minutes, 
I feel that for hours later. So you get this this calorie burning effect. You're down five minutes. Did they test? That's like, why you do consistently now. Five minutes. Uh -huh. yeah. I, know, I actually. Could, I could. I could the first two is the hardest. The first two is the hardest. I can't do that. Yeah, once you once you get to the to me, once you hit the two minute mark, you've regulated your breathing. You're almost numb at that that point. What I have a hard time doing is what I know some people recommend to do. I've I've seen Kelly Star I talk about. It. I think I've seen even the Iceman do it. Like where you're you're supposed to move. Mm -hmm. that fucks with oh. me so i if i get in i gotta i gotta get in i yeah, get all controlled get again i hit that two minute mark and i'm like still i'm just and i'm yeah. just focused on my breathing and relaxing if i do this and move around oh. it like it's almost like starting over the two minute clock so you got to right. get in there <laughs> you know what's weird about hot and cold tolerance is that you can have one you can be good at one and not the other one they're different oh, like for sure. i can go in a sauna or a steam room and i could chill forever Cold yeah, that sucks. Me. Yeah, cold I hate. I do much better with. You're, yeah, you're the opposite, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah no, I hate uh, cold. Is so, so I got to do it. I have to do I it. Was, so the brown fat, like, did they have they tested that in terms of like when the time length of like exposure, like when yeah. that actually starts to convert? Yeah, I forgot what it was. It was like you have to do Huberman, like how yeah, many weeks like, or months? Or I think it was like 15 minutes a week. Uh, I don't remember. It how was long. yeah, it's it's 12 or 15 minutes. I can't remember what Huber. I brought. I've said it one time on the podcast before. To reap the uh benefit, like the like the max benefits, yeah, you want to do a minimum of of twelve or fifteen minutes Something per like week. That. Okay, yeah. yeah, but that conversion happens over time. So, so that was that. That's also why how I got up to kind of like the five minute mark was, was like okay, you were trying to do the math there. Well, yeah, I was trying to go like if I do a minimum of three days a week and I'm doing four or five minutes, oh, I'm right. getting like the the maximum. Now I try and do it every single day, but there uh, it doesn't happen. So mm. yeah. I'm like if I can get in there get three times, yeah. yeah, three times a week. Be in there for four or five minutes. I'm going to reap the, the most of the benefits from it. I've been um, a, a lot more consistently doing mobility uh, in conjunction with that because I just started kind of getting after deadlifts and, and squats again. Which um, oh no, I, you know I've been I've been real unilateral uh, the last I don't know a few months uh, trying to address my hip issues and instability. Uh, and so like, I don't know if this happens to you guys, it probably does all the time, but once you really start kind of lifting heavy, especially barbell lifts, like you just get that restricted, like tight knot, oh, yeah. like, especially yeah. here in form flexor. And it's just like, oh, and it just kind of like plagues you for a while. So normally I would take like one of those, uh, lacrosse balls and I put it like on a, on the wall and I would just kind of roll with it. And it's a little funky or whatever, but I found the, that mobility wall so I've been using it just like, it's great for upper body, which I don't usually use a foam roll for my upper body as much, except for like maybe like two moves. Have you ever done so how does it the get, armpit? Okay, so if you do it for your, your upper body and it's it's in a doorway. Yeah. Are you like is it you kind of lean, lean, lean yeah, to it. one side. I, I, I so then you find probably more isolated. So how high do you like put it? So you need yeah, about probably, shoulder height for okay. that. Yeah, and you can put it high or low. I put it about I know like you can, chest so. height for it. So they have like actually in the middle of it, I, which was a cool tool I, I just realized they had. It's like a little tuning fork. It looks like it's like two little like forks that come up like this. You put your your forearm through there and, and massage it oh. uh, through, and mm. it, it just kind of rakes up through the muscle. Oh my god! So this kind Addressed of it perfect. yeah. So this kind of work they used to call it myofascial release. That's not really what's happening, but that kind of work is most beneficial on muscles that are hard to stretch. So yeah. like you talk about the forearm flexors and extensors. The problem is, is you know, once I try to stretch the extensors, my wrist locks. I can't go any further. Mm -hmm. So pressure becomes the best way to kind of break down and, and get that CNS and signal And obviously to get into the mobility yeah. and like, yeah, wrist cars and things, but like it still was like restricted. So that helped. Well, so that's, the, that's the the ideal pathway would be use the, the mobility wall thing to relieve, give the temporary relief, calm the CNS down and then do like risk Correct. cars afterwards. Yep. And then the mobility. Have yeah. you guys ever done consistently done where you, you, you do that kind of work on the Terra's major minor mm -hmm. in the armpit area, mm -hmm. bro. It's intense. Oh, it's, it's gnarly if you've never done it, Yeah, but then go do pull-ups or shoulder presses and you're stronger five pounds. My pull-ups like always go up if I do that first. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yes, well, because I I'll, I'll be I've tight. done it before, but I've actually never done it with that intent of mm -hmm. doing it right before. Uh, if I'm going to max out on a heavy pull, I'll go do that, and then I'll go do the heavy pull, and I notice uh, a pretty big difference. That's uh, right. Yeah. Today's workout program giveaway, Maps Strong. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it here on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if you win, we will notify you in the comment section that you won that free program. Okay, there's scammers sometimes in the comment section. They will tell you to text them or call them. Uh-uh, not us. We will let you know in the comment section 
that you want. We also have a workout program sale going on this month. MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Split are both 50% off right now. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Anyway, I got to tell you guys a funny story. So, you know, obviously I have a, um, my youngest is, gosh, she's going to be almost five months here pretty soon. It's flying. And um, Jessica sent me this video of her, right? She was laying on the couch. So Jessica, she's, just, she's such a chill little baby. We can put her down. She smiles, plays by herself sometimes. And she was laying there and she's just like tripping out <laughs> on her hand, you know? So she sent me this video and she's like doing this thing. And she's like, I think she's, I think our daughter's on hallucinogens or something like that. <laughs> But, you know, it makes yeah. you realize like at, at, at that age, at five months old, every day has got to be the weirdest trip. Yeah. Because she's seeing and, and She's processing. just realizing like what's happening. Yeah, like, dude, it's got to be like- controlling this? The craziest drugs <laughs> like, ever. You're, you're you know? at that, the five month, I can't remember. Uh, I remember reading this like as, as far as like, because their, their site is, it takes time to fully develop. Yeah. You know, they first like they see you up close and, and they, yeah, and they can't see like, like detail. It's like first like shape and like certain yeah. colors come through. And then, so it's like, I don't remember at what point they really start to see like the three dimensional mm -hmm. and like stuff comes out. So that's probably what you're seeing, right? It's, it's just, probably starting to come together. For I think it's what, what? I, what Justin was saying where, you know, she could see her hand before, but she didn't connect to the fact that that was her hand that she could control. Because mm -hmm. now she'll start to reach for things. Like you know what one I mean? finger, you know, you kind of go through that Bro, whole process. I got it. I'm going to post the video, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, but she's literally laying on the couch and she's just like, whoa. Like if you, if you saw somebody too many mushrooms, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. just look at like going to a <laughs> rave or something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, oh, <laughs> it was the cutest yeah. thing ever. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, you think about it. Like when you're, I mean, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what that must be like to be so new mm -hmm. to have that many. Because infants have a massive amount of neural connections, more than an adult does. It, what happens is it starts to prune and fine tune itself. So they're literally seeing and feeling shit in like, you know, 5D, like yeah. way more than we do and yeah. just tripping, <laughs> just tripping out the whole time. Uh, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. It was, she, it was she's fun. She's probably having a good time. Oh, what does that say? It is not until around the fifth month that the eyes are capable of working together to see? form a three-dimensional view of the That's world. That's what it is. The fifth month? In depth. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I remember that because I remember reading as we were going through the the process with him, and I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's like the, I th I just assumed that the baby's born, like they right could see, the they could see normal, and it's yeah. like no, they it's in phases. And I knew it was like around that time when it starts to really come all the way together that they wow. can see three dimensions. Dude, so. I got a sports thing for you guys. I mean, not really <laughs> your sport. You guys don't really give a shit about the sport. But do you guys know who um, Lionel Messi is? Of course. Yeah. Dude. One of the greatest soccer players ever, yeah. right? Yep. Did you hear what uh, Saudi Arabia just offered him to go over there and play? Oh, God. How much? Oh, wait. Okay. So this is another league like. Like LIV, is that uh, what's happening with it's, soccer? It's okay. So yes, he's going to go over there and play in Saudi Arabia, and he got offered a four hundred and forty million dollar a year contract to continue his club career in Saudi Arabia. Is he going to do it? Do wow. You know? I, I hope so. I mean, I mean half it, a billion dollars. A, a lot of these guys are turning it down. You say, so this is like, have you not watched what Saudi Arabia is doing? No. Yeah. Yeah, bro. They did it in bodybuilding. They're doing it in, in, in pro golf. golf. They're now doing it in soccer yeah. they're, and they're paying way over the top on everything. Yeah. Cause like what's, what's, what's the most a soccer player will get in club? Like uh, when we know what that is, it's gotta be, it's can't, it's I not mean, near that. They're pretty well paid, but yeah, not, not 400. Bro, that's, that's almost crazy. half yeah, Ronaldo's one of the highest, R Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, and I mean, they're, they're up there in the top 10 highest paid athletes yeah. already. But this is for a, this is not even a sponsor. No, that's, what I'm, this is just but that's what I'm saying though, is that they are, they are overpaying. They're the golfers that just went over there are like, uh, they're like top one, they're top yeah. 100 guys, but they're not even top 10 guys. Some of them. And they're getting paid more than like the highest paid golfers over here. So the live is, is paying like, and it, we saw the same thing, what they did with the bodybuilding community. Yeah, I mean, look yeah. at the way they're, they're taking care of the, the pro body. That's why they all go over there now. So it's interesting. It's the, very smart when you think about really if you're smart. trying to, you know, take a, the well, attention of millions of people. Too, to like I, I know. Wait, 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 was that his salary before 41 million? That was what it was. That's 2022. Yeah. He's going to 10 times more Ten times just like that. If think, well, think about this for a second. It. Look at the golf stuff too. Look up, look at uh, yeah. live, live golf. But, but think about this for a second. He could work for three years and be a billionaire. Yeah. And play soccer for three years. That's insane. The, there's these guys, the guys that went over to live. There's a really good uh, documentary on, um, you know how uh, Netflix did that whole one on F1 racing. 
They've done it now for tennis and they've done it for golf. It's yeah. really cool because you you cannot even be a, a tennis or golf fan and enjoy. They do a really good job of like introducing you to the sport and the and all the players and yeah. all the drama and some of that without feeling like you got to watch a whole eighteen holes being played. Or so whatever. okay, so Emirates it, like is Dubai's in Emirates? Is that that's correct? the airplane? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> United <laughs> United. What is it called? The United that? Arab Emirates. Yeah, and I think United Dubai Arab, is, is is part the, of that. The capital? I'm is not sure. Part, right. Yeah. Okay. So Emirates why do you guys say no, no, no? no is, I'm right. Is, uh, anyways, <laughs> so like Saudi Arabia. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> that's exactly what I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Saudi Arabia, like, are they part of the United Emirates? Emirates, I don't know. Is it United Arab Emirates? I think is its own country. Oh, Saudi okay. Arabia is its own country. Okay, okay. to my yeah. best of my knowledge, I'm yeah. just trying because the well, strategy we that was there was interesting because it's like they have all this crazy amount of oil money and money, and they yes. decided to put it all into the entertainment side of it, build these crazy attractions for people to fly in. That's what they're doing. I feel like this is the same kind of model have, they're trying to like expand heard, their money. Have you guys heard the stories of how some of these like like these female social media influencers or like only fans girls will get these offers yeah by some of these like mm -hmm. oil oh, yeah. princes or whatever yeah They're like i'll give you five million dollars i'll fly you out do this uh, you know do whatever and then i'll send you back home and it's like a thing it's like a big thing no did you uh, so there was a meme i posted years ago um, in fact, I think I even put it on my wall. I might be able to still find it. There's all the girls. Like yes, there's. It was a split. It was a split picture, and the top were like all the hot like Instagram models on the on a yacht. Yeah, and then it was like the, the five, other side. You get the fat. Like, yeah, the old five guys. guys that brought them there. Oh. You know what I'm saying, and they're like the old old fat you know billionaires over there. That's like uh, the for sure the worst of humanity. I just saw an article on on some girl posting something about how she. Some guy uh, paid ten thousand dollars to to fly her over just so he could take like a, a selfie with her to post, and then like the next picture she's posting out with her boyfriend somewhere else. Like I that. saw that. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, because she took her boyfriend to wherever he was. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I just that's. Crazy. What do you think is going through the dude's mind when he's paying ten thousand dollars to take a selfie? Do you think he thinks to himself like I think maybe the same there's a exact? I think the oh, same yeah, the he, same thing that goes to the guy's mind who when the stripper goes, "Do you want to go to the back room for an extra three hundred dollars?" He's thinking he's yeah. he's going to convince. Yeah, she's, she likes me. Yeah, yeah, she likes me. It's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's got to be the same thing. I mean, you, you don't get to have sex with her back there. She yeah. just dances on you. There <laughs> it is right there. Yeah, that's the one. That's it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, oh man. Do you think it's that? $10,000 just a picture? Or do you think he's doing this? Because it might be this. He might have convinced himself. and He's like, you he's, know, I'm helping her. She's trying no, to build her career. It's definitely not. Well, that. We call, they call him the I mean, simp, right? It's probably, yeah, it's probably all simp. relative, right? So, okay, let's put it this way. Like $10,000 still sounds like a lot of money to me. But maybe not to him. Maybe he's, you know, the guy's worth hundreds of millions of dollars and ten thousand dollars is like ten dollars. And would you pay ten dollars to take a shot at maybe a chance? And like he looks at it like no. well, didn't work I mean, out is for this me. the same guy as buying fart jars? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, first yeah, of all, it's like the same guy. Dude. First of all, I hate to say this. <laughs> I hate to say this, Adam, but if he has that much money where ten thousand dollars is ten dollars, yeah, he's not he doesn't need to do this to get attention. So the thing that okay, the so the, the only he's going to get attention from shallow women anyway. If he's got that, yeah. Much money. Okay, there, there's something to be said about this this hmm. this OnlyFans phenomenon that we're going through right now. That and why I think it's so one of the reasons why I think it's so successful is it creates this more intimate, real type of relationship. Yeah, that, you feel like you feel like you're actually talking to the yeah to another level, and so yeah. I think that's why it attracts and gets people like this more than just I you know I use the strip club analogy. But I mean, you're going to a workplace. There's bouncers there. There's and it's like you didn't communicate with her. There was no flirting going back. But in this game, I mean, these girls engage with you. They talk to you. They send you smiley faces. They, you know, they're talking back and forth. And so you, <coughs> you feel like there's a connection there. Yeah. And then you go pay, in his eyes, ten dollars to go. Maybe you know the, the, maybe I get more. You, you know? know what the stats are too on that is the vast majority of girls that get on there to try to make money because they, they hear stories like this. Like this will be easy. I'll just show my boobs or whatever and make money. The vast majority make almost nothing and they end up it's displaying the, it's, their bodies it's, it's or whatever. It's the 80 rule still. Yeah. It's even worse than that. I don't is remember it? what the percent. Yeah. I don't remember what the percentages is were, it? but the vast majority make like I don't almost that. nothing. I believe, I believe when it comes to girls, there's, there's like a, uh, yeah. someone for everyone. No, yeah. But you, not you, making you think it's money worse like than 80 20. 
Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you allocate it in terms okay. of money, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, sorry. in terms of numbers. This is the weird part, though. Have you seen like some? Uh, okay, so this is like it, genres of this, right? So there's like the older ladies like making bank. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> who's going for the silver? Bro, I so I, I mean, uh, how can I say this? I'll get in trouble on this podcast. He's like, I'm okay. So there's I'm there's up. a there's a <laughs> there's a, a a friend of ours that we know that has a a nan. Any, Name that, sounds like. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, I've seen her. She is a, not attractive to me whatsoever. Would have had no idea that her husband has made an OnlyFans page of her, and it's like her feet and her nails and stuff like that. And it's oh. like it. He crushes. He makes a bunch yeah. of money, and he runs it. Humans. And he just takes the photos of those stuff like that. And she is not cute at all, at all. But huh. she crushes. Weird. There's yeah. got to be something God, about it. God bless her. Majority of OnlyFans creators, more than 80%, make less than $100 a month. So imagine how sad that is. You go on there, you do some embarrassing stuff that's now out in the world and you made 50 bucks yeah. for the month. It's forever. Forever. The thing. Now, if you guys were a hot chick when you were younger, would you have done it? No. That's such a quick answer. No. I, I because it's it. an easy answer for me. Easy. Well, yeah, I don't easy, want anything that, that sticks. Yeah, nothing that's going to be there forever. Yeah. I'm always scared. Me not like the, our first hundred episodes in the podcast. Yeah, nothing, said some nothing shit like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing nothing like condemning that. and, you know, we have criminalizing. <laughs> you know? Oh. No, I wouldn't. No way. No way I would do that. Uh uh. Well, no, no, not, no way. Not in a million years. Well, My family I mean, would have to be starving. just your feet. God, that's weird. I know. That would be so weird. Yeah, what if you crushed, though? Yeah, I mean crushed. I mean Even made no. crush videos. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That. Yeah. There's weird stuff like that. What is that? What do you say? You ever heard of that? Crush videos where they do like they have like eggs or they have like smash little em. tiny Lego like they step on and them and they just crush it with their feet or dirt. like they're Godzilla so they make it look like they're all huge. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and what? What? It, what? It, Swear to God. I mean, I, come on, man. I like I watched that show. Here's the thing. Before all the madness happened, I used to watch this show called Taboo. And like oh, they, I, yeah. they went through like everybody's weird kinks and it was very fascinating to me. Yeah. So I, I, I got into it. Yeah. What, okay. What if you, uh, what if you didn't have to do much, Sal? Like, what if it was literally like. What are you trying to sell me right now? What are you, what's going on here? Because, because <laughs> you were so quick to say no. And I wouldn't say no that fast. I'd be like, well, kind of depends. Yeah, it was like sub I mean, how, how much consider. am I struggling right now? Like what. Yeah. What do I well, have? Yeah, to, my family was starving. What, yeah, I'm yeah, saying you're so, so quick to say no. My God, damn, bro. All you gotta not, do is sell your wife beaters after you. Yeah, exactly. What, <laughs> what, oh, if, what, if, what if people got off on your tiny little shorts and wife beaters, yeah, and dude, that was enough to why like are they tiny? your little, huh? yeah, your little <laughs> bikini briefs. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your the, bikini with the, briefs. With the grapes. And your, exactly, your yeah. bikini briefs and your wife beater. That's all you had to do. Yeah. We'll sell right now, and like like all pumped up after your workout shot. That's it. No. Not enough? No. Okay, we're running the site. You, you know what you guys are doing right now? You're setting up the editing team to put us some fucked up pictures. <laughs> That's what's happening. Exactly what's happening right now. I see Andrew in the back laughing. The sad part is like Andrew already has a photo of that. He's like, this is gold. <laughs> this is gold, like, bro. Should I use I guess the- we won't use it. <laughs> <laughs> that was just for you guys yeah, yeah. to see. Okay? Uh, what the hell's wrong with you? Okay, yeah. you know, what about like you, Doug? Would you do it, Doug? Oh, it depends on the circumstance. Yeah, see, okay, that's exactly. a better answer. That's a better answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like no way, which is so funny. He's probably the most likely to do what? that. No right? way. Yeah, what? bro. That's a, that's a bold statement. <laughs> He's like, I'll be a subscriber. I'm not being not a even, producer. No, that's yeah, a bold yeah, statement. Yeah. You yeah. almost did. You almost you almost did. Well, I'm not that. No, I did no. not almost do You almost served drinks stuff. at a party. <laughs> well, that was where. <laughs> I got, I almost got reeled in on that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like bartend? I, I could bartend. Can you imagine just having yeah. walk around and just, just like his skivvies with his yeah. drinks? Have yeah. a drink, please? I think More I was supposed dogs, to just be shirtless. Sir? I think I was just supposed to be shirtless. But then I was supposed to do other stuff. They kept adding like, stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. They kept As adding. As you got closer to the date? That was the exact same thing I, yeah. when I got the, um, when they were trying to get me to do the gay calendar when I was yeah. 20, like 21 or whatever like that. A guy like, we're gonna hey, would you, with you know, yeah. when you're like 22 and you're like super impressionable and I'm like working out and fit and then I remember this guy this guy approached me and wanted to know if I wanted to do uh, modeling. And I'm like, oh, cool. My ego right away. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm handsome. You think yeah, I'm, I'm handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Is it right? You think I got what it takes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And, they, and they, they start you off with just like basic stuff. Oh, are weekends okay for you? And we're beat shots. And yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Little by little. They get you saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh -huh. then it's like, like, are you comfortable with your shirt off? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, you come comfortable with no pants on? Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what kind of calendar is this again? <laughs> you ever done tickle fights? Yeah, and, yeah. But that's after like an hour of yeses and hearing all kinds of money you're going to make. And you're like, I could see how they get 
people to do that. Like, yeah. cause you, at one, you, I know there was a moment in there where I kept saying, yes, yes, yes. And then I started going, whoa. Mm. And, and then you're, you're wrestling with well, yourself. I mean, you're cool wearing you, costumes. Especially if you're vulnerable, you want validation. Yeah. Right? You want people to think you're attractive. You're vulnerable, maybe in a situation where you need money or whatever, mm -hmm. insecure. You've got these people, you know, and then you, you get the money for it. Everybody's saying you look good. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then you end up, you know, in these bad situations. And it just so happens that it's usually young people, right? Because that's yeah, what the market yeah. wants. So it's the worst. It's, it's the absolute yeah, worst. Predatory environment. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Terrible stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> crazy stuff. All right. So uh, I'm going to go negative here for a second. Um, <laughs> oh. Uh, Good time. Okay. There was an article in the New York Post. You know, I've been calling out how they're this weird campaign, this slow, weird campaign to demonize fitness and health. Okay. Yeah. And it's very strange and it's following the lines of political campaigns. And if you follow politics, you, you if you follow politics like it's a sport, you take a, a step out of it. You don't try and like, you know, want one side to win. You just look at it from the outside. You start to recognize these patterns and their strategies and how they slowly move towards a, a narrative. They test it out. They push it. And that's what they're doing with health and fitness. And the New York Post posted this article. I'll read the, the headline, and then I'll tell you what the study actually said. It was actually um, kind of infuriating. Somebody sent it to me, and I saw the title, and I said, hmm, this is interesting. Let me look a little closer. So here's what it says. New research suggests that physical exercise – has little mental benefits. <laughs> okay. That's the title. <laughs> wow. And this is this is how propaganda works. They often will take a study and they'll twist it a little bit, and I'll explain that in a second. And then they make the, the title something, and they know that the average person isn't gonna read any deeper, dive any deeper. They're just gonna read the title mm -hmm. and they're just gonna share it. And if you see enough of this, you start to believe it plants all the seeds. You yeah. start to believe this narrative. So here's what the study shows. The studies show that. If you are unfit, unhealthy, and you exercise, you get a profound mental benefit, which we've all known. When you compare healthy people to healthy people, adding more exercise doesn't improve mental health. <laughs> no shit. You know, here's the thing with, with, with exercise. It's so like vitamins. Misleading. It's like vitamins. When you lack a nutrient, you take that nutrient, you get profound benefits. If you don't lack that nutrient, Taking more vitamin C or vitamin D or zinc isn't going to do anything for you. It's like saying somebody who's broke who now gets to make a quarter million dollars a year if it wouldn't change their life. Someone has zero dollars a year and you give them a quarter million dollars versus giving somebody who's already worth tens of millions of dollars an extra quarter million dollars a year how much yeah. it changes their life. Right. Like, yeah, no shit. It didn't change that guy's right. life so, much. So you didn't the, even feel it. The yeah. mental health benefits, which by the way are widely recognized, the mental health and cognitive benefits of exercise are there because, not necessarily because exercise is this mental health booster, but rather lack of exercise destroys mental health and cognitive function. Yeah. So when you add it to somebody who's sedentary, unhealthy, like most people, yeah. they get this profound benefit. If you take somebody who's already healthy, relatively active, you add exercise, eh, you're not going to see this huge profound benefit. That's why, that's how it works. And what they did in the study is they used that group and said, ah, see, there's no cognitive benefits. Well, I just saw another because one they're healthy already. since you went on this direction. I just saw another one that was on, maybe Doug can pull up um, Dr. Ruscio's uh, Instagram. I think it is Dr. Ruscio, I think is his Instagram handle. He had just posted one on some terrible article talking about uh, that probiotics are a waste of money or something. Did you see that one? I didn't. Yeah, that one had just, I mean, I, I think it's relatively new because he just posted it like two days ago and I had seen it. Did you see it, Doug? I see it. Yeah. So it's Dr. Uh, let's see, Dr. Ruscio DC. And it was. Read the title. Of the yeah. Article. Probiotic supplements may do the opposite of boosting your gut health. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the article? What's, what, yeah, what's his take? Read the take on it. His comment, his, his, uh, his thing on it without us having to read the whole article. So he says, cherry picking. My assumption is that the reason this old study is being resurfaced is another news piece is because it's performed well. Yeah. This is why it's important to, not to get your healthcare information from the news. Clickbait. I, I'm telling you, but it's that interesting again. that so that's an old study. Yeah, that's resurfaced right now. I, I, I weird. I, you know? I am saying this. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I don't understand. I, I can I can only speculate. I can only speculate why health and fitness 
is slowly becoming, there's, there's this propaganda machine that is now demonizing it and it's starting to happen more and more. And I'm going to keep calling it out so that when you see it, you can remember this. So do you you're, think, if you're do you, sick, you're in a state of fear. Uh, that's mean, my you're speculation. Easier to control. My speculation do you think, is. Do you, think it's, do you think it's more demonizing in that, or do you think it's more that you're? They're just trying to cater to those that want to hear that message, anyways. I think that's the that's the hook. That's okay. the hook. They yeah, know that that's in. that's an in. Mm -hmm. right. But I that's my speculation. Obviously, I don't know. But it look. It, my speculation is that sick, unhealthy people are easier to manipulate, manipulate. They'll buy more of your shit. They're the, it's easy for you to scare them into voting a particular way. Mm -hmm. And pharmaceutical industry makes a lot of money. So sick, unhealthy people, are, they, their healthcare is expensive, fit, healthy people. They don't cost much. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't, I don't know if I subscribe to it being that insidious. I think maybe it is just how do you explain the strangeness the, of these articles? Because, because they get the clicks other... and shares. That's why, and they're in the business of eyeballs and making money. There's on a lot of ways to go to get uh, clicks. Yeah, but that's all. It's obviously a proven way, and and that's why I think mm. we're seeing more and more of it because I think more and more publications are going. Oh wow, when we do this alarming, like when we put a obese girl on the cover and say she's healthy, boy, do we fucking yeah. get some attention. When we say probiotics are bad for you, or they, oh boy, do we get some attention. When we say that working out is Right, boy, are we getting so? so yeah. I think it's that's what I think. That's like, some of it. That's my I, le, my I, less tinfoil hat version of what we're talking. I would about. agree that that's some of it, but I think some of it is too strange to it's, me. It's too freaking. It's too across the board. Weird, yeah. And it's like it's being coordinated. I've never in my life read articles demonizing, like no, taking care of your health. It's there really used to be government promoted movements to. to bring awareness to the benefits of exercise and better nutrition. And it's been completely uh, attacked, you know, instead now is all we're seeing is like all these articles and things like picking apart uh, environments where people are trying to better themselves. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm it, speculating. You're right. Yeah, totally I, mean, I, think, I just think it's a brilliant strategy on their part. It really is. It's just like you, you get, cause what it does is because it, it's the opposite of what people know. It's right. It's the opposite. It's like, I mean, this wouldn't work 20 years ago when no one gave a shit or were paying attention. There's not, there wouldn't be enough people like us to get outraged about it. Maybe, yeah. And because there's enough people like us to get outraged, now you have all these micro, you know, networks and influencers yeah. that are like, you know, remember when that when that article came out with that girl on the front cover of it and uh, entitled it "Healthy" and she was obese. Do you know? How, I mean, when you went through your feed of all of our fitness friends, did you find one that didn't talk about Everybody it? Everybody did. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. not? Did I mean literally? Yeah. So I mean, and and that's what they're and and let's let's be honest. The uh, you know, basic old you know, Cosmos and women's health. Those are dying, and so mm -hmm. they're desperate, and so they're looking for any way that they can create attention and eyeballs. And if that means saying outlandish, stupid shit, yeah. that's going to get us all talking about entertainment. I mean, there's no yeah, real and news and, anymore. And the reason why I think it feels coordinated is because it's working for so many other publications. They're all copying yeah, each now other. Now here's, look, I would tend to agree with that. And then you look at something like ESG, which is literally, uh, well, that's crazy. What just well, listen, it demonizes companies and it benefits other companies. And it's through this kind of like, social movement that they mm -hmm. determine, which, you know, very strange, by the way, like Chevron ranked higher in, than, <laughs> Tesla, than Tesla. Right? ESG yeah. stands for what? Envi environmental, social, and I don't remember. Can you maybe look up uh, what ESG stands for? It's like three mm -hmm. things or whatever. And it, it it's very Global. strange. And it's, it's going social. it's going to have profound implications on the- Governance. And governance. governance. So basically you get ranked on whether or not you're doing social justice, you're doing this or that, and it's going to punish other companies for not doing those things giving government the much more power uh, over the market. This has already been happening for, I mean, I brought this up on the podcast well over a year or two ago. Scary and shit. It's, and yeah. it's already started steering uh, VC money. So yeah. in Silicon Valley, like if you didn't have these high score, like you're getting these companies that are getting money uh, because they're, they score so much higher than another company, even though someone might have a better idea. So it's already happening on the And on it the sounds like a good idea, up. but what it does is it gives government the ability to, to manipulate. Yes. yes. So and again, Tesla, electric car company ranked lower than Chevron, uh, which is an oil company, which is very very strange. Yeah. yeah. Makes zero sense uh whatsoever. By the way, a bipartisan bill, okay? Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. sent a bill to stop ESG, got on Biden's desk, he vetoed he it. He vetoed it. So when shit First like this happens, and then I see all these articles at him, I'm like, oh, I don't know, bro. Yeah. It's weird. It's, it's tough for me to 
to trust a lot of what's out there these days. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I know Doug right there is like, please move on. I'm going to stay here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> The I will say <clears throat> say this again. If you take a step back and you look at politics like it's a support, like it's a sport, yeah, the Democrats are playing a brilliant game right now. Oh, I'm glad you stayed. Brilliant. Here. I actually, I actually yeah. wanted to talk about this because somebody, when I did my questions, asked me uh, about the whole Trump indictment stuff like that, and I said, well. I said, this is Sal's theory. And I said, I tend not to uh, argue with him when it comes to that stuff. It'd probably be like him arguing with me about sports. I said, so he's probably more likely right than me giving you an answer. And the, what I said was what I've heard you say already, which is that you think this whole thing with Trump being indicted and everything like that is actually a plan for the Democrats to help him actually run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which so, sounds crazy. The average person would go like, huh? No, that so makes they, no sense. this is an old political strategy um, where you you try to pick your opponent and mm -hmm. you try to pick the opponent that you're more likely to win. Now, you got to take a step back because this is also a risky game. It could also backfire. Sure. So you think to yourself, why would the Democrats want this to happen? They're in a bad position. So the crazy COVID policies are largely blamed on them. Economy, although it's not entirely the fault, is bipartisan shenanigans, largely still blamed on the Democrats. Biden is incapable of winning. He is clearly in dementia. Yeah. They know it. They know they're screwed with well, him. He has, doesn't he have the worst approval rating in history yeah, too? Yeah. And you just, you put him on stage and have him talk and it's just, <laughs> it's going to be a complete uh, nightmare. Inflation, largely getting blamed on the Democrats. I'm not saying it's their fault. This is total. Both parties are. To no, they're just, they're, they're caught holding the bag. Yep. Right. So they're, so they're in this really bad position and they, we have this election coming up. And so they're doing what's, they're throwing what's called like a Hail Mary, right? In mm -hmm. sports where you just throw the ball, you just crazy pay, play because yep. it's like your only chance. You hope for the best. And so they know, they feel like they have the playbook on beating Trump. But Trump was like, if you looked at his rankings in the Republican Party, it wasn't very good. Mm -mm. Uh, he was like a pariah there for a second. So I feel like what they're doing right now is they're resurrecting. And sure enough, all this attention on him has made him the leader among the Republicans. So, because he has a base. Even over DeSantis right now. Yeah. Over everybody. Well, DeSantis isn't even in the conversation anymore. Yeah, because he's got, he has a, such a crazy base. He will win 40% of the vote no matter what, but that's not enough to but win. But they also know just his name immediately will deter people away from voting. Right. 100%. So, so he'll win the primary. They want him to win the primary because they know he'll lose the general. Yeah. And they did this in the midterms In the midterms it was supposed to be this red wave and they supported pro MAGA Republicans in their primaries knowing they would beat them. And sure enough, it worked. Yeah. It stopped this, what was supposed to be this, what all the polls were showing. I like your answer to this. Yeah. If, if DeSantis was to take on Tulsi Gabbard and do oh, like bro. a bipartisan kind yes. of push to get people to build bridges back to some reasonable, logical. That's what should happen. I would love what, to see. Why be the best for America, but nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Okay. So explain to me then you, uh, why, to me, that seems like such an obvious, brilliant strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Like in a time when we are the most divided ever and everybody, I don't care if you're left or right, is 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 pulling to be more in the center, yeah. right? That's, that's what's happening. And traditionally, this is what happens. When we go extreme left, we go extreme right. It doesn't matter. Typically, most people would consider themselves yeah. moderate and they want to come somewhat in the center. So after the most polarizing last four years we've ever had in, in our lifetime, why would somebody not partner up with the opposite side and make a run? Why do we still continue to play so, this Pepsi Coke game? I'll, 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 let me comment on that in just a second. So uh, I want to go back and explain a couple of things with the Trump thing. People are like, well, why would they indict him? How is that going to get him to win the primary? He gets lots of attention. He's going to a lot of support now. He looks like the underdog. The The charges are so flimsy. It's not going to stick. He's not going to go to jail. Now, I could be wrong. He could go to jail. Highly unlikely. If he goes to jail, I'm wrong. If he doesn't go to jail, I'm right. I think that's what's going to happen. All right. Why don't they do that? Because that would destroy their ability to divide people. That If, if you combine forces and unified, well, now people are going to be more like, well, what are the issues? What's actually happening? What are the results? Like, what's going on here? They, if they keep everybody separate, this two party system, because if you've ever seen a third party try to jump in, they both work they together. team up on him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They yeah, both yeah. team up. Yeah, they want to get him out. So that would be like the worst thing ever. They would get no money. They would get no support. They would get. Remember Tulsi Gabbard when she was running uh, for the primaries, how she started to climb and she was very like balanced and logical. Yeah. And she got destroyed by, oh, by her own yeah. party. 
Dude, she was called a Russian spy. Yeah, Russian well, spy, even though she's like you a veteran served, yeah, our country yeah. like heroically. It's like ridiculous. But this is this is, in my opinion, this is the Democrats' only chance because they're in a bad position. So they're like, get Trump up there, and in the general, you know, election, why, his ego is like, going to get him screwed. Which this is, is what why happens. you should have to pass a test to vote, bro. I uh, swear to God. I know. I know you don't like that because he's like, oh, it's like. Yeah, who, who makes the test though? As long at as, least as, be a, a as, long as we American allow uh, the majority of people, which let's be honest, are not very capable, okay, to vote, this is what's going to happen. They're easily manipulated. Yeah. Like if they, if they don't have, if we don't have some sort of baseline of like, hey, if you don't uh, do this, produce that, pass this or something in order to to vote, like I feel like By the we're way, always going to have a, a majority of people that really have no business voting because yeah. they're not even they're not even educated enough on the situation. Well, okay, so this is this the founders knew this. That's why we're not a pure democracy. So pure democracy, majority rules, we're a constitutional republic. They knew this, and so they put in rights that cannot be um, uh, voted away by a simple majority vote. Yeah, there's like a really complex process, but nothing's perfect, dude. You're right. Mm -hmm. Like the majority of people. I mean, Rome proved this. It's like keep everybody um, distracted. Yep. You know, bread and circuses. What do they call it? Keep them distracted. Well, I mean, that's what give people, them free stuff. It is, the uh, how, how is the NBA and NFL any different oh, it's yeah. the same, in the Coliseum? Yeah, same playbook. I mean, and it, it, to me, that was highlighted more than ever in the last four years when you saw how much politics bled into sports. Look, like, look how much civil unrest we had when they took sports out. Yeah, it oh. was insane. Oh yeah. yeah, they didn't have an outlet. Riots everywhere. Bro. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah part where of else it? are you gonna go? That's that's, crazy. that's totally true. That's but crazy. I mean, look, when they spend, they are masters. Uh, the, the the you know, if you look at the political system, you're, you're looking at a presidential campaign is billions of dollars alone, and that's not even looking at the other money that nobody accounts for. They're masters, masters at getting people to feel and think a particular way. Way smarter than anybody who votes. So if you think this is like, oh, I know kind of what's going on, like, eh, probably not. You know, you're, they're really, really good at what they do. It's like processed foods. Processed foods are engineered so well, you think you're going to eat them and not crave more food. Oh, yeah. Like you're not smarter than the scientists that created that food. These these polit political parties and the people that fund them, they're so good at what they do. Yeah. They'll run circles I know, this around This is everything. not my wheelhouse. So it's like, it's, I know I get criticized. I talk about some of this, but I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I try and think of it like running a company. And I can't imagine having a company of like thousands of people and we, I allowed the, and let's say I'm the founder or the CEO of this company. And I allowed my, you know, 900 of my, or all of my employees to have a vote and just decide on which way we steer this company. Yeah. Them not knowing the PLs, them not knowing the challenges and difficulties of creating, developing, mm -hmm. hiring, fi nothing. They, all they know is their one, their one little position that they do involved in it. Yet they get a say in where we go left or right. Like that's just weird to me. One is bad. Yeah. One is worse. If you ran the, if you ran the, gov the, our government, that I mean, way, that's you'd probably have a, a good way. That's probably a good way to say it. Yeah. So you know, it's, like, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not great, but it's better than the I mean, if we had a fictitious, a fictional, like angel leader, like they have in movies, which don't exist, <laughs> like this guy that's like super good. And like, I'll lead the country, do it. You know, just, that's it. I got full yeah, power. Then they're the Antichrist. Then yeah. they're all fine. <laughs> yeah, dude, so, so yeah. Well, that's why I think the, the best answer is just, Get, and where I think uh, I, I, th I think most people agree. I know there are some people that are like is small government. Yeah, yeah. Is is smaller is better is less local less yes. local because local you have way more influence. Like ask people how they feel about their fire department versus how they may feel about like a big federal system. Right. right. Like you yeah. have more influence over smaller local government than you would uh, much larger, big behemoths that, you know, mm -hmm. like that's centrally run and trying to run the whole country. And then you get a lot of problems. Doug, what was the name of the book? I haven't talked about this book in a long time. And it's a, it's a, uh, it's a good reference. I know we're getting ready to do a shout out and I'm going to do this book in, in addition to a person if we want to. Uh, Peter Schiff's book, and it's called- um, uh, How Economies Grow oh, and Why oh. They Die. And Why They that's Die. A good one. That. That's a good Such one. a good read. Yeah. For someone who's like, even not even really, like Katrina loved that book because- of the, It really the way, breaks it down. Yeah, he tells it in a, in a very simplistic story as if we were on an island and we had to literally build an economy from nothing and where fish was the only commodity and that that was for survival. And, you know, we were, there was, I can't remember how many people he, he put on this fictitious island and like how would something like that grow into something? And, and then the challenge is- 
that you would have as a society and as a group going through it. And it's, and it's really easy when you look at it, in my opinion, in that small of a level, because where it gets difficult is when it gets so big, it's it so feels complicated. It gets complicated. And it's like, Oh yeah. How, what will we do about that? It's yeah. like, yeah, then these people are going to get hurt from that. And these people, and everybody wants everyone to be, ha it's like, but when you see it in a group of a hundred and it's like, Hey, we have to make, we have to build a society from here, you know, and it has to be successful. We have to have passed this on to generations and we got to all eat. We all got to like, what does that look like? And, you know, and hard decisions have to be made and sacrifices have to be made in that in order for it to work. And so it really simplifies uh, a very complex thing, like understanding yeah. e the economy. Cool oh, but uh, here's something that's interesting. So Arnold Schwarzenegger has a podcast <laughs> yes. and it is not him. Yeah. It is AI. His, it's his voice, AI. It's T1000. It's a robot. It's an AI it's Terminator. machine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's, this is, okay, we are now entering into an age where consumers are going to have to pick organic, you know, I'm going to use the word organic, I know, you organic might, content you are, or non-organic content. Should we start that trend? <laughs> yes. Hey, Doug, how hard is it to be, to, to put like a little on our logo? Like, like put organic, organic on on yes. it, like real yeah. organic yeah. conversations. Yeah. Or just, yeah, real humans. Yeah. yeah, let's start an acronym. Let's start yeah. an acronym that stands for like real organic humans. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. They're like, how do you know it's real? Yeah, yeah. Like, ROH. artificial ROH. robot. ROH. 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 Put like a little Talk. asterisk right next to our logo. It says ROH. Real organic humans. Yes, yes. Yeah. it's a it's a podcast and it's a freaking. You, it's an AI. Die, what you know, it's do? embarrassing. It's outperforming us right now. Yeah, <laughs> dude. dude, it's brand new. AI, dude, brand new. It's got his name on it. Sounds amazing. Like, How do you know it's real human? I mean, well, I, kind of that's sucked. true. It's brand new. It's brand new, and so you get ranked different when you're brand new. I remember. I remember Nike was kicking our ass for like the first He's week. Kind the of first a big month they were out. Yeah. No one sees them no more either. Yeah, dude. How weird is that though? Like, are celebrities going to start putting out uh, their voice? Like, because I guess you can license your voice. Is that how it works? Yeah, I mean, like I told you before, like Will I Am, the guy from Black Eyed Peas, he literally digital copied himself, like in like scanned himself, all his mannerisms, how he talks. He like went through. <laughs> the whole weird like library of words and was just like you know reciting it all so that way he could just there i am so they live you guys in, gotta, in the digital world you guys gotta listen to the the most recent uh all in podcast where they have a really good conversation around the future of ai and i always like when those guys disagree right and there's and they yeah. all bring and you'll really appreciate sal because i know you're I, like you're really enjoying uh freeberg's david freeberg the, the science nerd yeah. guy his perspective and you align a lot with him uh, economically and he's talking about you know they, they'd go over this person who is, his job was replaced overnight by ai and you know they're like oh you know we're gonna have all these jobs us and freeberg is always like the voice of reason when it comes to free market and like no yeah. that's what everybody always thinks and then it ends up it innovating adjusts. more and we're more productive yeah. but then chamath came in and said i don't necessarily disagree with you but i don't also agree with you either because we have never seen anything like this ever and i know that's what everyone said about the printing press and everything, but Right. This is the first time ever, and he made this point that I didn't think about, that I thought was really interesting. Never have we had something that is a completely closed loop, meaning that all the innovations from the plow to the tractor to the printing press mm -hmm. to the computer and so like that still needs an input from a human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are now generating things that is completely closed loop that does not require our our ability at all that's whatsoever right. to right. print just generating the power to to usher it that's right he was talking about and they used the example of what, what's a what the the people that uh research is it uh oncologist who does the uh, cancer research oncologist oncologist well they're right? just the, they're just cancer doctors you got cancer doctors right, right. so uh it, it, that we now have an ai tool that can like predict it accurately to by by point something zero point something percent yeah. which is better than any human could possibly do and so what are they, what are they going to be necessary? What are they going to be necessary mm -hmm. for? So I thought that was a really interesting perspective that I hadn't thought about yet. Cause my initial reaction is probably similar to what yours is, Sal, which is, oh yeah. Okay. It, inevitably a few people will lose their jobs. If you, and if you're slow to adopt it, it could be your mm -hmm. job. Um, but it's only going to, it's only going to get us more productive faster, just like the computer, just like the plow, just Margin like all those of error things. is going to shrink substantially. That's right. And then we'll just get more jobs, more innovation, more time. Usually what but happens, but usually what the happens. innovators are going to be AI. Exactly. So that is the part that Chamath is like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think you're weird. seeing this all the way through that. This is something so different. Yeah, than it's what we've the, ever it's seen. the first time technology will be creative and yeah. can create. So then we're no longer the innovators. That's yeah. that's the issue. Now, the, the, the promise is we'll never have to work again. So it's like, oh, this is a future where AI does everything for us. 
That Which sounds utopian. Is not utopia. But no. you get a bunch. Imagine right now. No, I'm, I'm, the people who don't like exercise, don't think that all hard work is good. All those people, which is a majority, think right are now, be miserable. Think of the average public right now. Now nobody works and everybody has free money. That, like, is that good or bad? For some people, it'll be good. I'm sure. For a lot of people, it's be not so going to be boring. so great. It'd be so boring. Well, look oh. what happens when people retire. The, the, uh, oftentimes, depression goes through the roof yeah. and, and, and all kinds of health issues go you through. You remember when I shared on the podcast, this is like a long time ago too, it's like four years ago when we were, we were here, and I told you that phone call when I called Katrina and I was all pissed off or frustrated with you guys when I was driving home. Yeah. Remember, remember that? <laughs> yeah. It was like actually one of the most profound moments. Uh, it's not like the way he brings it up too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right at the time, I was real mad at you guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the truth. Was, My wife called me down. Yeah. It was yeah. probably Sal. I was probably just pissed at Sal. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, I, should, I should loop I'm angry at everybody I, I was trying to be sure. nice and bring it to everybody I know you were <laughs> but mainly I remember South. the original sure. story oh you do yeah I do <laughs> it sounds like I remember the fucking day actually <laughs> no but I mean that was such a profound moment for me when you know because I was in the moment right I, we just walked out I'm like yeah. all mad she had just called me and I'm venting to her and stuff like that and she had this long pause and, you know, I was like, hello, are you still there? And she's like, yeah, are you done? And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. You know, and I'm like, what do you think? And she's like, would you want it any other way? And I'm like, and it really stopped me in my tracks and go like, fuck, you're right. Yeah. Like Dude, how she's, what, she's your oracle. <laughs> she, is my, she is my yeah. she is my oracle yeah, for imagine sure. Imagine Adam without Katrina. Uh, oh my god, no, I don't want you. <laughs> Shut up, you know. I knew I yeah, know you when you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you said you're that. all right. Yeah, yeah. That, was a lot, that was a lot of fun. You're bro. fun. Let's you're be honest. Let's be honest. That was a lot of fun. Less productive. <laughs> yeah. We're way further. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we are. We're, yeah. That's we're, hilarious. We are a lot better. Dude, there was an article that was just written. there's an expert. I'm trying to read who the person who wrote this was. But, oh, it was an AI researcher. His name is Dan Hendricks. He argued in a new paper, natural selection favors AIs over humans. And he basically said, this is his quote, we argue that natural selection creates incentives for AI agents to act against human interests. So there's two observations. Firstly, natural selection may be a dominant force in AI development. Secondly, evolution by natural selection tends to give rise to selfish behavior. So imagine AIs competing with each other and one of them is doing things by the book. The other one is like, I'm going to like do things and not get caught so I can win. And then the other one says, well, I'm going to do things this way. And eventually these things could evolve to become these really selfish Terminator-like machines. And so he wrote this paper and he's like, hey guys, these things may evolve to be pretty messed up. It is a little scary that people like Elon Musk, who obviously was pro. All yeah, he's stuff, smarter than most people, right? Yeah, is 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 signing the petition for us to pump the brakes on all this stuff yeah. like that. That does make me a little nervous. Oh, and Bill Gates is totally like against the signing it. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> he's my favorite. The guy with all the farmland, yeah. right? Yeah, like, making all the best decisions yeah, uh, for Bill humanity. Is fortress and castle out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, dude. Why was he buying so much farmland? Oh, God. God anyway, so who's, who's, the, who's the shout out today? Is it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know we did the, the the Peter Schiff book, but I, I mean, we could also give because uh, Brett Contreras was on the list uh, that I don't think we'd give a formal shout out to. And I yeah, just good think trainer, good great coach. trainer, great trainer, great coach. Uh, I mean, God, the 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 inventor of the hip thrust, right? I mean, that's what he says. <laughs> I think it was, but he's he popularized it for he's sure. Definitely he he put the it Godfather in, of it. If anything, yes, yeah, so he yeah. put it into programming and, and yeah. really got people to pay attention yeah. to it. And, and you you know, I, I I love talking to him because you can tell. I mean, we always we try and highlight these type of people. There's a difference between just having a PhD and being really smart and then having that and then also having trained hundreds or thousands of people. Yeah. And you can tell by the way they talk and they answer things. Yep, yep. It's always nuanced. It's never this, like this study says this, therefore that. Right, it's right, like, right. you know, well, this may indicate this and this is what we think we might know now. And like, you know, this might work good for these people and like the way he communicates and nuance, yet he's got this PhD, so he's brilliant. So uh, he's a great follow, and he yeah. is the ass man. So if you're a chick who's trying to build an ass, um, <laughs> yeah. his content or is- Or a guy, you yeah, never know. Hey. For, yeah, that's true. That's true. Check this out. Organifi is a company that makes organic plant-based supplements to improve health, performance, to help accelerate muscle building and fat loss. They have superfood blends for energy, relaxation, immunity, and more. Great company. We love working with them. In fact, we just helped them create a new- pre-workout type supplement. Uh, it's pretty amazing. You got to check this company out. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time because they have some of the best supplements on the market. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump 
and get 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Rachel from Massachusetts. Hi, Rachel. How can we help you? How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks. Um, So my question is basically, why can I not put on a lot of muscle? Why I just feel like I'm just very much even killed no matter what I do. So just a little background um, on, on me. About two years ago, I was a seven day a week crossfitter. Um, I would say probably under eating at that point, um, over training, running 20 something miles a week, uh, not prioritizing sleep, none of the, the good stuff that you guys uh, promote all the time. I ended up uh, starting to work with a nutritionist, um, started reverse dieting, lost a ton of weight, slimmed out, was very, very lean. You could see every muscle, um, but totally kind of burning myself a little bit with the training. So um, fast forward about a year later, I've now been kind of living at maintenance for a while. I've done two mini cuts. Didn't really see that much um, progress from that. Not as much as I thought I would for how I felt when I was in the cut. I felt like I was starving to death. Um, and now I'm back up to maintenance again and now kind of shifting where I want to try to really put on muscle. And I just, I don't feel like I'm, I don't know. I'm like, am I ever going to be able to put on muscle? I just feel like I'm not. And I feel like I'm doing everything that you guys tell me to do. Um, the only two things that I can think of is one that I'm probably still doing too much. And two, maybe I need to eat more. I I don't know. Yeah, I think your your intuition. Yeah, I think Mm -hmm. you're right. If if I read this correctly, you're you're following our aesthetic program now too, which is what typically people that are overtraining (laughs) and doing CrossFit two days a week. Oh, oh shit! And you're doing CrossFit too. Oh yeah. So I do cross. I do CrossFit two days a week, and then the other five, no, other four days, I do a full body aesthetic. It's not your program, but it's another. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, too much. Lifting program. You're, yeah, you, too much. Okay, so two things. So let me let's start here first. Your intuition is one hundred percent correct. I'm going to assume you are a high achiever in many things in life. You probably bulldoze your. Yeah, okay. So this is just your. This is the gear that you tend to run in. So it's going to be hard for you to identify. But look, when you were doing before, when you were burning yourself out versus now, have you gained muscle since then? Yes. Okay. You're going to gain a lot more muscle if you do what we're about to tell you. So you've already made one step in the right direction. That's right. You just haven't made enough steps in the right direction. So how important is the two days a week of CrossFit to you versus building muscle? Tell me which one's more important to you. High building muscle. Okay. Stop CrossFit completely. Eliminate it. I'm going to put you on MAPS Anabolic. And I want you to bump your calories by about two to 300 calories a day. And you will see strength and muscle gains. You will for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I won't get that. <laughs> no. I no. would, so the, I, the, I would, I would probably slow the calories because you're going to, you're about to reduce a significant amount of activity. So I wouldn't quite bump 300. I'd say a hundred to 200 fine. calories, but I mean, the goal would be to do 300, 400 even. Right. So yeah, that's I, fine. I would just slowly, eat, so eat what you're eating. So what I would do is right away transition into the training, like we're saying, and then like maybe the next week or two add a hundred calories a day, see how your body responds. Then add another hundred calories a day. Both like are that. right. I mean, both are fine. Here's why I said what I said, because I think your body's thirsty for calories, nutrients. And yeah. I think your body's going to, what I think is going to happen is you'll switch to maps anabolic, quick CrossFit, bump your calories. And you're just going to get stronger. You're just going to yeah. boom, build some muscle. You could do what Adam said too. If you're afraid of gaining body fat, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll still gain muscle and get stronger. And you could do it that way as well. They're both, I think, totally fine. In fact, based off of what you just said, your fear of gaining body fat, I think I'll, I'll, I'll side with Adam. Why don't you just mm. keep your calories where they're at, cut the CrossFit, do MAPS Anabolic, and then the following week or two, bump your calories a little bit. Have but you, you will build muscle doing that. Have you ever actually done a deload week? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Have you ever done a deload week before? With training? Yes. Yes. You okay, have. Good. I have a hard time with it because yeah. I don't want to do it, <laughs> Right, <laughs> but I do do it. How did yeah. you feel the next week after you were done? 
I'm still doing the CrossFit too, which is like. <laughs> but that's not a deal. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm doing two separate things at the same time. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yes, I'm yeah. doing the deload week, but then yeah. in that week, I'm still going those you're, two days to CrossFit, which is clearly not deload. Your, so. your, your intuition was okay. right from the very jump. I yeah. mean, you, you, you're, and Sal hit it just right. You yeah. saw already some some positive return on cutting back from what you were doing with the extreme dieting and seven days a week crossfit right. or whatever it was and now if you need to take the next step which is you need to reduce even more and increase right. more calories and the and the only reason and sal's actually right with the 300 calorie thing the reason why i'm suggesting that is because i heard what you said yeah he's right because yeah. you're concerned about that and i know and you're going to if you add 300 calories you're going to add carbs you're going to add water mm -hmm. you're going to have so you're going to get a little bit of weight and that that psychologically tends to fuck somebody who you switch them like that and so i would want to ease you in psychologically that hey, we're okay you're not, this is not body fat we're putting on. Yeah. It's a little bit of water you've, you've got in there right now. We're going to be building muscle. I don't care about the scale right now. I care about how you feel and I care about your strength. Like that's where I want, and your calories, right? My goal for you, if you're a client of mine is, and I don't give a shit about the scale right now. I care about you getting stronger, you, you feeling good in there and us able to get our calories up. And if I'm able to do those three things, I'm moving the needle in the right direction. And then, the, then it's just about being consistent with heading in that direction. Okay. Rachel, how, how long have you been listening to our show? Not that long. My nutritionist actually turned me on to you guys. Uh -huh. And so maybe six months, six months, But I was already kind of my nutritionist. I listened to everything she tells me and she got me following all these great people on Instagram. And so I'm totally in a much better place than I was two years ago. Okay. How, so how I, much do you trust your nutritionist on a scale of one to 10? 10. Okay. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. Do what we say. She trusts us. You trust her. I'm saying this because this is going to be hard for you. Do exactly what we say. Count against the, the feelings you're going to have, where you're going to want to jump out of your chair. You want to pull your hair out. I got to do more. I got to do more. Yeah. Just do what we say. And then once the results start to hit, it'll get a lot easier. So I'm going to send you maps anabolic. Go ahead and do the three day a week version. Do the trigger sessions on the off days. Keep your calories the same. Cut the CrossFit. And just trust the process. You're gonna, it's, you're, you're, you're gonna want to, like I said, you're gonna want to jump out of your chair because it's gonna be so much less than what you're used to. You're probably used to burning yourself out. Just do it and watch what happens. Your strength is gonna go through the roof, and you're gonna see muscle gains. Is what's gonna happen. And if you get yeah, just on the calories, so, so I have like really high protein. I'm almost at 170 grams. Is that appropriate, or that's you fine. think that's that's fine. Yeah, okay. that's great. I mean, unless you're having digestive issues, but it sounds like you're working with someone who's helping you with that. Yeah, so, yeah keep it there. Yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. You're, okay. You're fine on that. If you get restless and it's and it's really starting to become a mind, go for a walk. Yeah. Go walk. Yeah, I well, I sit all day, but I have a walking pad, so I walk like my desk lifts, and I walk on the treadmill awesome. quite a bit during the day. Awesome. Because that was that I that was fairly new in the last three months because I was like I listened to your pot one of them that said. People that go to the gym for one hour a day think that they're really active, but they're actually sedentary. And yeah. you ask them, and they would tell you active, but they're not. Yeah. So I got, <laughs> I, I got um, the walking pad. So um, I can of course, the advice we give to the sedentary people yeah. who hate to work out it actually triggers the fitness fanatic. <laughs> every time, every yeah. time every the wrong time. person, yeah. I would have heard the same thing and yeah. did the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So. But that's good though. Walking's good for you. So I'm yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm that's super fine. pro that. And if you find yourself because we're reducing you down to only three days of like real strength training and that and you get restless, go for a walk or go do yoga, do some recuperative stuff for your body. So you're saying that I should only lift three days? That's that, it. That all, is Maps anabolic. Correct. Maps anabolic is only a three day a week core lifting run. Now it does have trigger sessions where you can do some band work, but that's another The band fun. work is low intensity. Yes, I'm you're glad. just getting a little pump. Yes. That's it. Yeah, you're so not it's not a workout. It is not a workout. You should not sweat from it. Yeah. You should not get sore no from it. No longer healing. You're adapting. It's like a, totally it's like, different. It's like walking for your muscles, well, for your arms. You, you know, think of it like that. You guys, only lift three days a week. Oh, I have hit some of my highest yep. lifts training that way. Yeah. Yes, that doesn't mean we're sedentary days in between, and That's that doesn't mean we don't go to the gym five to seven days a week. You can yeah. still go to those areas, but you you choose to do different things. Sometimes it's a it's an hour walk on the treadmill. You sometimes it's that intensity. Sometimes it's forty five minutes of mobility and stretching. So just learn to do other healthy things for you than pounding the weights. Pounding the weights is good for us, 
but you don't need more than three days a week of some hard strength Especially training. from where you're at. Cause, yes. Because it, it, it all depends on who I'm talking to. So I tell you what, give this five weeks, come back, and I guarantee you you're going to be, your, your mind will be blown. And that doesn't mean, by the way, that doesn't mean we can't get to a place where you have these phases that you do get right. to train five, six days yeah. a week. But where you're at now, no. But, but when, you're, when you're telling me that, hey, I'm stuck in a plateau, this is how I feel, this is where I'm at, I'm telling you, your intuition is right. Yeah. You need to keep going in that direction. We need more calories. We need to bring down the intensity a little bit. Then as your body starts to recover, you start to build more muscle, the metabolism's higher, now you're yeah. eating more calories. You literally have to change the change. It's yeah. that simple. And, and then, then we have all these other programs that you could cycle in and out. Some of them are five days. Some of them are, you know, three days or so. But this is the right one for you right now. Okay. All right. All right. I, I want I'm giving you, it a shot. I yeah. want you to keep us posted, too. Please circle back all with right. us, okay? Email back in in another 30, 60 days. Actually, let's put, let's put her in the forum. I'm going to put you in the forum, too, Rachel, because I want to hear okay. back from you. I want to hear back from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please. All right. Sounds good. You all got right, it. Rachel. All right. Bye. All Appreciate right. your help. Right. Thank you. All right. You know what I love is that the people have the intuition. Yeah. Like, ah, am I doing but too they much? Don't listen to it. No, <laughs> they don't want no, it. No, I think, a lot, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if half the people that call into us, I mean, if you've been listening for they six just months, wanna, they, they just know, want us to say they, it. Yeah, they want to hear it. They want to be confirmed. Like, Come on, you know, bro. Think about totally. yourself or, you know, I'll think about myself. Nine out of 10 times, the, the things I really need to do, I'm like, I know, yeah. Yeah. you know, I just don't want to. Or you know? is it like, but I'm the exception. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe it's different yeah, for yeah, me, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Type of, she's going to like, she's going to build so oh, much strength and muscle. She's going to see great results. Yeah. Yeah. I wish she was like, this is the kind of client. That's I a love. tough cookie though, you know, that's, yeah. that's a tough client to convince. Well, the psychological part, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is the only reason why I argued with, not argue with you, but the only reason why I challenged No, no I know you, where you went. You're because right. Because you're right. You are right that you want to get her calories up and I would bump 300 right away personally, but I also know that if I was able well, to train her every week and be me, in her ear, I would have. I don't want different. to counter what you guys are saying because it's totally on point, but like, you know, part That's of right. what we talk, <laughs> 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 you fucker. <laughs> yeah. really, uh, <laughs> part of what we talk about with like fasting, you know, it's like what you learn from that. Like, yes, you're you're yeah. going to, you're going to, you're actually going to be fine. And also too, it, it helps you to look from an outside perspective of what your patterns are. Yeah. And that was my point with the deload. It's like, sometimes you just got to cut it all out and yeah. really assess like, what did this do the next week to me? Yeah. She hasn't even gone through that yet. That yeah. was, I mean, brilliantly said hundred yeah. percent. Very, very, yeah, very true. Our next caller is Michael from Arizona. What's happening, Michael? Hey guys. Uh, just start off with the obligatory. Thank you. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for about a year now. I um, really love your content. I listen about every day. It's awesome. So thank you guys for that. Awesome. Right um, so my question is, so a little bit of background, I'm 19 years old. I'm from Arizona. Um, currently at college in Utah right now and weigh about 190. Um, actually in December, I was running MAPS power lift for a meet in February, but over winter break, I ended up getting really sick and lost like 25 pounds. Um, so that didn't end up happening. Um, so since then I've regained the weight and the strength and stuff. I'm pretty much back to where I was before I got sick. Um, but I have someone else coming up. So, uh, starting in May, I'm serving a mission for my church for two years in Argentina. Um, and so while I'm there, I will probably be walking, I'd say like 15 miles a day. I'll be walking everywhere. Um, I won't have a lot of control over my nutrition. Like we will get fed by like the people we're serving or teaching and stuff like that a lot. And even then we have like a small budget for food every week and stuff. So I won't be able to buy like, I don't like, I don't like protein and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, they do eat a lot of beef down there though. So that'll be good. Um, but yeah, and then so every morning we'll get about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes of exercise time. Um, and so I've worked really hard to get to the point where I am today. And I know that I'm with that, like the circumstances I'm going to be in, there's no way I'm going to stay the size that I am right now. Um, I've come to terms with that. But I wanted to know what were something you recommended that I could do with like basically zero equipment. Like I won't have anything. I'll be moving probably every couple months. And so I won't be able to take a whole lot with me. So I was thinking about taking some like resistance bands or something like that. But um, basically I was just wondering like with that 30 minutes, what's something I can do to minimize the loss of like that lean body mass I've worked for. I know it's not going to all stay and I know I'm definitely going to be smaller when I get back, but I was just wondering if you guys had any recommendations of things I could do to keep that on or like mitigate the loss of it. But you would be surprised yeah, at surprised. How, how effective a, a, a daily workout can be do, do you, would you be able to carry around a suspension trainer because it, yeah. it's like well, not a lot resistance bands too i think is a great call yeah uh, i might be able to yeah okay i'll send i'm gonna send you maps 15 
I th- uh, MAPS 15 okay. uses a suspension trainer. It's an everyday workout. I think that'll be perfect for you. We can also send you MAPS anywhere where you can use bands. And I think those two programs will give you enough. Because you said you're going to be gone for two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah, those two programs will give you enough variety throughout that two-year period where you're not going to need any equipment except for the bands and the suspension trainer to do what okay. you need to do. For sure. Sweet. Yeah. Can we... Can we, can we- can we, wait, 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 can we, we, we kind of have something perfect yeah, yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We have you want to beta test something yeah, for us? When do, you, when do you leave? When do you leave again? Uh, I'll start. I'll probably leave. So we do like, it's called the Missionary Training Center and I'll go to Mexico. I think on May 22nd, I leave. So then I'll be out of the country for two years. Is it live by then, Doug? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it should be live by yeah, then. Yeah, but oh, this okay. is going to be live when we Yeah, but we don't, we'll, we'll, yeah, we won't tell fine, the, but we won't tell the audience. We won't tell the audience. We're going to give you something. We're going to send you a secret program. Yeah, so secret, super secret Sweet. program. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's coming up next. This for, is the Roswell program. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nobody knows about it. It's, it's perfect for what, uh, for what where, where you're going, what you're doing. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get that over to you before you get over there. So for now, I think- the, the, So you'll have three programs you could cycle through. Are you in our forum? by the way i'm not uh-huh. oh okay and obviously it'll be hard to get on social media and all that while yeah, you're there. yeah yeah so yeah. i get that but otherwise i would love to you know keep up especially if you're testing this program I'd love to follow up with you michael you mind if i ask what things you'll be doing when you're out and in, in some of these places sorry what was that do you mind if i ask you what types of things you'll be doing when you're out in these places uh you said you're on a mission what, what kind of things will you be doing so basically what we do is we just go talk to whoever we can and try and share our message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, what we can uh, offer them and try to um, bring them into that fold, you know, just share our message of love and peace through Christ. Yeah. Good for a you, lot man. of service. While awesome, we're man. There. Good for you, buddy. Well, hopefully our programs uh, help you out there. Yep. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You got it, man. All right, Mike. Keep it up, man. All right. Thank you. Yep. Nice kid. You're, you're meet a 19 year old. It looks like they're 30. That was me when I was a kid. They got oh, like yeah. that face. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. look like you're, but you're not, you're obviously 19 years old. It's a, it's a compliment. <laughs> As people used to think I was 30 when I was 19 all the time. So just, anyway. just wise. I was the yeah. I was the opposite. You always look like a kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah which yeah, is yeah. finally starting to pay off. A little yeah. Bit. yeah. <laughs> no, now that we're older. <laughs> <That's> like, useful. <laughs> everybody's like, so you look like you're 50. <laughs> oh, uh, when's it going to stop? Anyway, uh, uh, you, people will be surprised at how much you can maintain with far less volume yeah. and far less intensity. And the studies will show it's like one sixth. Some studies show one ninth. Mm-hmm. The volume will maintain. So it's es- just- especially in a situation like this, when it's novel. Yeah. Like if you, if you do traditional strength training in a gym or at home with like barbells, dumbbells, stuff like that, and then you have an extended period of time where you don't have access and you got to go all suspension trainer or all body weight. I mean, you could potentially make gains. Because it's so novel. I mean, it's true. Yeah, I mean, especially and especially this young. It's not like he's hit his peak potential. Mm-hmm. He's still on the come up right oh, now. Oh yeah, that's true. It is. Yeah, age. I mean, I mean, well. one of us ain't gonna make gains uh, on a two month men- mission going to a suspension trainer, but I'd maintain decently yeah. that way. But I mean, at 19 years old, he's still on yeah. the he's on the up and coming still of building muscle and building his physique. So even though I know he's worked hard to get where he's at right now, because suspension training and body weight training is probably going to be so novel to him, there's potential for him actually gaining. Now, where it'll be hard is, is the nutrition, right? If he's mm-hmm. if he lacks protein significantly. Uh, well, the, he, well, so Argentina is beef world, heavy, yeah. world renowned for steak and mm-hmm. beef. Mm-hmm. Like they supposedely have the best beef and in, in steak Dude, in the, the world. Steak houses are great. So, so I think like the traditional dishes even out there will serve lots of beef because it's supposedly inexpensive. Yeah, he eat, if he eats a lot of beef and potatoes while he's out yeah, there and dude, does suspension cr- trainer and, and body back weight more stuff. Come back, yeah. yeah, even more jacked. That, that would be cool. a great testimony, right? <laughs> yeah. It'd be great for that program launch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 19 year old goes to Argentina and comes back jacked maps. Yeah. <laughs> Our next caller is Greg from Wisconsin. What's up, Greg? How can we help you? Hey guys, yeah, appreciate you having me on. Um, I just want to give a big uh, thank you to you guys. Um, I started listening to you guys about a year ago. Uh, it was kind of a tough time for me. Um, my dad was in the hospital, uh, diagnosed with cancer. So I spent uh, a lot of drive time going to visit him. And that's kind of when I discovered you guys. And you guys got me through that whole time. And um, again, when he, after he passed last April, you guys really helped me out, uh, kind of distracting me. and kind of keeping me on my, um, come on pace for my fitness goal. So I w- just want to say thank you guys for that and really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks. Um, and then as far as my question goes, um, so a little bit of background on me. I am 39 years old, 
Um, 6'4", 220. Um, I've always been pretty athletic, pretty decent shape. Uh, I grew up playing basketball through high school and some other sports as well. After that, kind of got into um, just some pickup basketball, some volleyball. Um, but the problem was I was never really a big leaper. Um, I was vertically challenged, to say the least. Um, Adam, you probably appreciate this. I even tried those strength shoes way back in high school. <laughs> yeah, did that too. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, those yes. didn't really do much for me. Yeah. Um, but I am turning 40 in January, and my goal is to be able to dunk comfortably uh, by the time I turn 40. So my kids are getting into basketball right now. I've got a 10-year-old daughter, a 7-year-old son. And, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, show them how to work hard, work on their skills, and kind of improve um, kind of model that behavior and also just kind of show up, right? So um, being able to kind of set them up for success. Um, so my question then kind of goes into the programming to try to reach that goal, right? So I'm looking to increase vertical probably six to eight inches. Um, just a little workout background on me. I did MAPS performance last spring then aesthetic, uh, then symmetry, finished up anabolic in January. And then right now I'm running performance again. I just started phase three. So just small knowledge I have from you guys, I figured running performance first before getting any, any sort of, you know, vertical specific type mm -hmm. workouts would probably be the best approach. So my question is, you know, what does programming kind of look like? I would assume it's going to be a lot of plyometrics. Um, and then also from a nutrition standpoint, does it make sense to go kind of into a cut and lean out? So, it, you know, then it's easier to get myself off the ground, right? Um, and then also, is it possible to maybe combine, um, you know, vertical jump programming with any sort of other skill work. Um, I know I don't want to do something that will kind of negate, um, you know, the vertical performance aspect of it. So like, could I also try to work on improving like my pull up in conjunction with, uh, something in the, the, the vertical leap aspect. You're going to get that with, so you're like a, a very similar body to I'm six, three, I'm 230. Uh, I've actually, this has been on my mind getting back into basketball. Uh, literally what I would do is I would run performance in a cut to do exactly what, what you're thinking, which is to lean out. Uh, you're going to see strength go up in like pull-ups and body weight, stuff like that. And your ability to jump. So all that stuff, so strength to weight ratio. That's be, right. Yeah. So even though Effective. you might not see, uh, let's say your bench press go up or movements like that, uh, your strength to weight ratio will go up. So the things like pull-ups and jumping will be a more of a priority to you. So I'd run performance. And then and that really is just to get me in a healthy position to train more like pure vertical stuff. And then I actually wouldn't, I wouldn't personally build that. I'd go to Paul Fabritz. I think he's the best in the business and he's got a vertical program. I would literally run his program right after I ran performance mm -hmm. and I will guarantee you, you will see your six to eight inches. You'll be setting your, your body up correctly by running performance with us and getting lean, getting like a good, well-balanced, mobile, strong, joint-supported yeah. type of deal. Your base of strength will be covered for sure. I think you have the right ideas in terms of like going into the programming is like, I got to build my overall body up as much as possible and like generate as much force. Because really to be able to vertically jump and get that triple extension, you need to be able to master that summoning of more force. Uh, and so to Adam's point with that, like he probably has the best, very specific skill based program where he's not only just going to like work on, you know, plyometrics and things like that, but also really the skill of how to approach the hoop of how to get that long enough stride, uh, drop step, um, you know, all these different things and factors that will, will help to increase that, you know, sort of elastic, uh, uh a launch that you're going to get for your vertical jump. Are you, are you following Paul already? Uh, yeah, I remember I heard you mention him a couple times. So yeah, I'm following him right now yeah, on Instagram, but I haven't 
gone in any of his programs and really looked at what they entail. Yeah, yeah go, in, go into his jump program. It's incredible. I know people personally that have gone through it. I've seen all his tests. He's a friend of ours. So um, I can't speak enough about him. I think I think him and and uh, our other friends, Mar- Max Marzo. We're not and, even affiliated. By yeah, the way. yeah, just yeah. Pure, and then, pure recommendation. And then if you run through his program, you find like some of those very specific skill based drills that he has. Um, you could always combine that That's in like right. your mobility days uh, yes. with performance, which you know I've always wanted to do that anyways with athletes, and I kind of naturally do that based on their sport. We we kind of dissect the sport in terms of like some of those very specific skills you need uh we can we can fine tune it and customize it a bit more that way uh, incorporate it on those mobility days per- perfectly said that and so uh, that to recap that's exactly how i would do this personally maps performance i'd run paul's jump program then i would take out of paul's program what i what i felt gave me the biggest bang for my buck and then i would implement it into one of our pap- map for like long term right like if you said you had goals hey i still want to be strong still want to look good too and so i want to how do i combine keeping this great vert that i got now but then also kind of sculpting my body that's what i would do is i would take the 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 big rocks from his programming for his vert code that's what i think it's called vert code i think so and i would take the big rocks from that after i've ran it through the way it is so i'd run it true to the program and then i would i would parse out the things that oh yeah that really has helped me tremendously and justin's right there's things that he he'll he'll uh he'll break down the technique of you uh coming up to the hoop and just how you you load yourself going into the jump that could like i've seen guys with no training just him showing technique yeah on and like gain a few inches oh like they gain like three four inches just yeah. from just instantly from his technique of doing it so the guy's incredible he's brilliant his programming is on, on point and then as far as like the nutrition it would be like i said cutting during performance to kind of lean out and lose some some body body fat so you're leaner uh, and then I would just, yeah, I would actually eat for performance after that, you know, eat balanced, eat, be fed, make good choices. Uh, as long as you feel like you're in a lean enough place. If you're six, four to, you said two twenty. I, I don't think you're too far off of being pretty lean. Okay. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah. I, I followed this stuff for a while and yeah, some of it looks pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty intense. Um, hopefully I can find all the, you know, kind of equipment to do that, but, uh, no, his vert, no, yeah. his vert code is 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 like he does all kinds of stuff to attract people on Instagram, but the vert code is is a lot more uh, I don't know, fundamental or basic, and you'll be able to do everything. You'll you you won't need anything crazy. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, Greg. I right, appreciate it, guys. You got it. Yeah, all keep right. us posted. I want to see a dunk video. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I plan on trying to uh, take some video and. Uh, be able to to showcase to some of my uh, my buddies. Yeah, and, done. It'll it'll inspire it'll inspire me because I've been saying that I'm going to do it forever. Everybody keeps asking me, and I'm like, I keep dragging my feet. So maybe I just need to. Well, see. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you said. I just listened to right, the, yeah. You just listened to what? Yeah, I just listened to the episode of uh, where you were talking about at that birthday party grabbing that bar. Oh, oh I yeah. forgot that. Did you post that video? Yeah. That went with that, Andrew. Did you we post? Did. Yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. The highlight of yeah, my so I was, <laughs> big ass, big ass yeah, so dad was flex up. right there, dude. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure I'm bad dad and not the uh, not the other one. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. all right. Yeah, yeah. You're already you're already doing fine, bro. Yeah, you're, you're doing good. Most you're, guys our age, they don't they do terrible. They're doing terrible. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're already on ahead. the couch. Yeah, keep us posted. Though. I'd love to hear Greg how, how the journey goes. Yeah, we'll do. All right, man. All right, I right, appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was super weird. I didn't really say anything. Um, <laughs> was that hard for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. like, uh, <laughs> no, I don't have anything to add. You know what? I, I was going to ask you guys. I was going to wait till we were done to ask you guys. From what I understand from the biomechanics of jumping in basketball, just from watching Paul's videos, because I do watch some of his videos. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think in some cases a unilateral training program like Symmetry would Absolutely. help somebody? Yes. Because it's because one thing that I saw from watching his videos, like I don't really have much. I mean, I play basketball, you know, here and there's a kid, but I didn't play like you guys. Uh, not even close. Is that you you launch off one leg. It's yeah. a one legged jump. Most of the time. Yes. And Most so, of the time. Yes. So I, I, uh, so I was, as he was talking, uh, you know, I want to ask you guys, like, I wonder if symmetry for sometimes, especially for someone who's been training a long time, might have that that right to left discrepancy. Yeah, I would. Say if you 100%. were like, let's say I w- wasn't going to recommend like Paul, I would definitely do performance and symmetry. Okay, mm-hmm. the combination of the uh, unilateral work with uh, the performance aspect Got of it. Maps Performance would give him a really solid foundation. Mm-hmm. And may he may and if he's just playing basketball, he might see 
Well, uh, uh, and increase. here's the thing. The more acceleration you're trying to apply, which is like, you know, you're trying to generate more force. You have to be able to control that. Yeah. And so like uh, so, something like symmetry, you're going to be able to stabilize yourself more effectively, which then helps improve your technique overall. No, 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 no. A hundred percent right. So to explain just differently with what Justin just said, if you've ever, if, if you guys ever seen those videos where there's like, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a water saw where they shoot a stream of water and they can cut through anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, the reason why that's so powerful is because the hole is so small and there's so much pressure behind it pointing and directing all the energy into one point. So if you made that a big hole, you'd still shoot a lot of water, but it would have very little. So what Justin said about controlling force, if you have a lot of leaks in your force, you generate force, but you it leaks, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you can control it and focus it, on the point that you want, now you're way more effective. power. Now there's a lot of power, which also speaks to what he breaks down a lot, which is the technique of the right going into the jump. That's right. right. I, I mean, I've literally seen videos where he's getting yeah, the guys, approach I, I is, is huge. Guy gets six inches, dude. Yeah, yeah. like just it's by nuts. showing them how to yeah. load the and and the when you better start getting technique. commission though. We recommend enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I we'll call get him on the, the phone gotta, here. I got to call him up. I'll hit him up. <laughs> Our next caller is Sarah from California. Sarah, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, you guys. Um, such an honor to be here. I'm like literally such a huge fan. Um, definitely changed my life listening to you guys. So kudos to all three of you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Awesome. For, you don't forget Doug. Um, There's four of us. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> Poor Doug. Um, I just had a question about deload weeks and like soreness. I just finished MAPS uh, Advanced Anabolic Phase 1. And then I did a deload week. Um, I have never structured a deload week in my life ever, which is my fault, but that was my first time actually like following a program and then doing a deload week, um, the, within like the first day and like doing like a body weight exercise, I was like abnormally sore. Um, so I just didn't know if like being abnormally sore on a deload week is like normal. And then I also experienced like a little bit of hip flexor pain, so I just didn't know if that was like something to expect or if that was normal, if I was doing something wrong. No. So, okay. So it's normal to come back from a deload week and the first week of traditional workouts makes you more sore. It is not normal to feel more sore during the deload week. Is that what you're saying? That on the deload week yeah. you felt more sore? Okay. Hmm. Well, it's because it was such a novel movement then. Either novel, like it's exercises you're not used to, or the intensity was too high. I want you to approach the deload week like you're just going to the gym and just going through some movements, and that's it. It's not a workout. That's that's how I want you to approach the deload week. It's like I'm just showing up and just kind of moving my body. I'm not going to feel like I'm working out. I'm just moving through different exercises, and that's it. A mobility day would have been, I mean, yeah. like a MAPS performance mobility days would be, it sounds like, better for you. What exercise did, did, did that to you? Yeah. Um. So the first day, I just like, or I guess like day one of deload week, um, I just like walked didn't do anything crazy. And then the second day I just did like body weight lunges. I think that was like what it was programmed, like body weight lunges, some pushups, maybe some stretches, um, the body weight lunges, which is weird. Cause I used to do a lot and I still implement body weight lunges, but for some reason, like that deload week, like I did the body weight lunges and I was like, Oh my gosh, like this hurt, like hurts more than normal. Um, my okay, I, I got something for you. Okay. This was after phase one. Yeah. Did you get, how, what were your strength gains like in yeah, phase one before you right. got to the deload week? Um, they were like, it was pretty significant because yeah. this is like my first time, like really following like a structured program. Okay. I did aesthetics, but I kind of just went through it loosely because I just like didn't know what to expect. And then once I did aesthetics, MAPS advanced an anabolic release. And I was like, all right, yeah. I'm, I'm going to explain what happened here because this, 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 uh, this is interesting, but uh, now I think I know what happened. Okay. So you had significant strength gains after phase one, which is uh, ex expected. Okay. The program produces very rapid strength gains. Then you went to the deload week and you did an exercise that you've done before, many times before, a body weight lunge, but your strength is much higher now. So it feels like low intensity is actually super novel to your body. You're probably doing more and generating more force than you did before. It's a novel exercise. Now you get sore. Okay. So you need to approach the deload weeks. Like I'm just going through movements and really like, like with gloves, like I'm just taking it super, super easy because when you make those big strength gains, going back to other exercises you haven't done before, uh, you're going to be doing them with or more force. Haven't and done in a while. More reps. Yeah. That you haven't done in a while. Yeah. You're going to be doing more force 
and more reps than you did before. And even though it feels easy, it's still super novel to the body. I've experienced that myself, by the way. Well, plus so you're in a split stance situation with that. You're generating so much force in a bilateral position. And then now going into that is going to be a different situation for your body to react to and respond and try and control and stabilize. And so having a having stronger legs going into that as well, maybe producing more force in that, uh, but haven't really like accounted for the stabilizing effect of that like that might have also like exaggerated a bit more yeah which is also why she probably feels in her hip flexor so much exactly yeah. Yep, so yep. yeah i would like so i'd take the movements and um and actually almost make them like a like the lunge more like a mobility thing where you actually yeah. do like a stride yeah. and actually kind of stay in the position drive the knee over like you're doing a yoga squeeze class, your you know? squeeze really your glutes your heart rate down yeah and then go to the next stride stretch it out activate the glutes drive the knee forward so i would make these like long slow like think of it like recovery not like workout like okay i'm here to like speed up recovery and make my muscles feel good not work out Think of it that way. Do you have ma do you have, do you have uh, maps performance by chance? I do not. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Doug uh, send that to you. I know where you're going. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to do this for your deload week is to take that and uh, to do the mobility do sessions. mobility yep. sessions. So in okay. so maps performance is obviously a whole program in itself. But what we have in there is on your off your non foundational days we have what we call mobility days and they're basically. We say 40 minutes. Yeah, about 40, about 40, 40, 45 minutes. 40, 40, 45 minutes. Do like two of them during yeah. that deload week. And and do those in there, I think, in your yeah. deload week. If if you continue to, to feel this, if maybe the advice that we're giving right now and you're still feeling really sore from the deload week, maybe do something that's more programmed mobility for you and see if that eliminates that and then pay attention to how you feel. When By you the back. way, Sarah, you could totally, if you're following maps anabolic advanced, you could totally do nothing right on the deload mm, weeks, which and, is why and I just walk. Totally. You can literally do nothing and just walk and you would get, yeah. you, it would be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do, I know you answered this like a few weeks ago, but for like deload weeks and like eating the same, um, like specifically for ma maps anabolic advanced, like, you would just say like, even cause I'm not really like cutting. I'm not really bulking. Like I'm just kind of like, yes, here I am. Um, I'm trying to like get back in tune with like my hunger cues after tracking for so long. Um, so would you just say like, just like stay yep. like yep. eating the same, doing the same, all That's that right. fun stuff. That's right. Keep it the same. Yep. Keep okay. it the same. And you're going to, after you come out of the deload week, you're going to trip out when you get to phase two, you're going to be like, Whoa, I feel like this is pretty crazy. Yeah, phase two has already been super exciting. I'm like the halfway through the first week and I'm like already like loving it. I think the deload week like mentally like made me miss the gym um, and then lifting heavy. So now I'm like, all right, I'm ready to get Good. back awesome. at it. Are you getting close to hitting PRs in some of your lifts? Yeah, I am. I've already, phase one, I already hit a PR, which was super exciting. I like literally looked around the gym to see if anyone saw that, even though nobody <laughs> put me in. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Good job. Very that's good. awesome. Yeah, thanks Thank for calling you. in, Sarah. Yeah, you yeah, got that's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. You All got right, it. Sarah. I'm excited that we're now at the point where when we launched Maps Anabolic Advanced, we're going to get feedback like this. Yeah. And that's why, you know, and again, I have to caution people with it. The strength gains come so fast and furious. Mm -hmm. with that program, you got to be really serious about the deload oh, weeks and very man. serious about your form. Cause when I followed it's it, addictive, isn't uh, it? Oh man. It was like, Oh, keep going. So no, that's great. You no, know, it's a good conversation to have because yeah. the truth is exactly what you said, right? All the research supports that you could take a week off and you're going to of no exercise. No, just it's walk. the mental part. That's why I said it's like they put, I put a workout in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and that's why too, I'm like, Hey, there's nothing wrong with you just doing mobility all that week. That's it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Go do, go do mobility uh, work for that week. So you're, you're busy still, but you're not doing anything strenuous or strength training wise. And then watch what happens the next week after that. That's awesome. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all the free stuff. We give you all kinds of free things at that site. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.